Hi guys! In this video I'm going to do a walkthrough of my big Erin Condren hardbound planner which I use as a home planner and also as my main decorated planner. So as you can see I have recently covered the cover in stickers mostly from the Manby Value Packs and I wish I had done this a lot earlier because it's just really taken my enjoyment of this planner to a whole new level. So when you open it, I have got a postcard clipped on the inside. This is from Paper Chase and I bought it a few years ago and I call it the Elephant Postman and I imagine that he is bringing happy mail and lots of plannery goodness to the door. So seeing this just makes me really happy and I haven't glued it in because I want to transfer it to the next planner when this one finishes. This is the linen option that came out about a year ago when Erin Condren first introduced the hardbound planner range and it's got the mid-century circles colorful design and I absolutely love it and I am hoping that she's going to bring out some new dated 12-month planners in December when this finishes this runs from July 2017 to December 2018 I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute so here I've just decorated the dashboard a little bit with Happy Planner stickers again and Erin Condren's autograph from PlannerCon Europe in October 2017. I haven't done anything with this spread and here I'm just covering up each month as it passes with a sticker from the floral Happy Planner kit that was released quite early on. I think it's called Today's the Day. It's before they started naming the packs. So you can see that I'm a bit over halfway through. And then on this spread, I decided to make it into a kind of motivational page. So I've just put in lots of things that I wanted us to do, me and James, or to have like a clean minimalist flat and calm and lots of movie nights and road trips. So I really like this. I come back to it occasionally and look at it and like to see which of those things have already happened and which of them I still have to remind myself to work on. And then we come to the first monthly spread. So in my previous video, my May lineup, I talked about how I haven't really been sure what to do with this monthly spread in the Erin Condren. I use this as a home planner, as I said, so it's mostly for things that affect me and James together like our work schedules and vet appointments and things that we're both going to do but I do kind of use it as a general catch-all planner because like I said it's the only one that I really get to use a lot of stickers on this planner as you'll see is basically just devoted to the Mambi sticker value packs it's really just a vehicle to use lots of them and you know so if there's a sticker that happens to be appropriate to something going on even if it's just to do with me or just to do with James I put it in so when I first started using this planner in July 2017, I thought I would use this as a month at a glance, which, you know, is kind of an, an obvious usage. And I, so I was putting in things like when I was away or when we were both away or work schedules. And then over time, I kind of felt like it was a bit redundant because we really just leave this planner open to the weekly spreads and I could put all that stuff on the weekly spreads. And so there didn't seem to be a need to go back and check the monthly spreads. And I felt like it was a bit of a waste of stickers. So as it goes on, I'll show you how that started to change. And I stopped using the monthly spread in that way. So the weekly spreads, when I first uh, started this planner, I decided to set them up because I got the three boxes running in the vertical spread which I really like I decided to use the first one for uh, whereabouts so where James and I are the second spread is for Tails and Mochi our dogs and then the third spread is for things that affect the whole household so things like meal planning which as you can see I failed at right from the beginning things that we were going to do appointments uh, people coming to the flat you know like an electrician appointment or something like that anything that would affect us but wasn't necessarily to do with our whereabouts. So that was the general way that I was planning to use it and that has kept pretty consistent over the course of the last 10 months. Um, I didn't really have any plans for the side or the bottom or for this little box here. So for this box I decided to use it to put a quote in each one and I have generally done that. And as you can see sometimes I left this quite blank 
And my idea with this planner when I first started it is that it would be a white space planner, but everything would be on stickers. So you can see this is quite a typical example of a spread from early on. I would put on anything that needed to be there. So appointments and whereabouts and plans and stuff like that. And then I would just leave blank anything that didn't need to be filled with the occasional full box sticker. I'm using the Happy Planner stickers in these. That was tails in the background. But they don't fit the own country boxes as you can see so sometimes there's a bit of extra space around them and I don't really mind that. So here I went a little bit more minimalist with the monthly spread and just decided to use it to label some like kind of big events. So this is a Yiddish course that I teach that was running for the whole week and so I put that down there and then I put a lot of, another few things on that you know like we were planning to do and here when I, I had an appointment that lasted all day in another city and so I was going to be away. But other than that, I kept it pretty minimalist with a bit of decoration. Then as we go on, this is another monthly spread where I tried to label things that were going to be recurring every week. So for example, if James was working every Friday in the market, and so I put that down there, we were going to tried to brush our dog Mochi's teeth every Saturday so I put that in there and then this was recycling. So I thought if I made it into more of a recurring weekly task and appointment tracker that that might be a better use of it but that didn't really get used either. So if we go on I'll show you when I started to kind of change things up a little bit. So here you can see, this is January 2018, you can see that the week is a little bit busier. And this is mostly because I decided to try to start getting the most out of this planner and using it a bit more. And also because it was a break from teaching and I was working at home. So I had a little bit more time to invest in putting stuff in here. So I really tried to put in things like uh, dinner dates and flea treatment and birthdays and just anything that was going on so that it would get to be a bit more filled than it had been over previous months when you can see it was it was quite often pretty empty mostly just because there was a lot going on and I didn't really put a lot of time into this so I like this look it's a bit busier but there's still white space and I think because of the three boxes you can generally find what you're looking for. So again, I would put whereabouts and particular plans for the day up here, things to do with the boys down here, although not always because here I ran out of room and so then I put James had a day off here, just because often if they don't need to go to the dog sitters, let's say, or they don't have a vet appointment or they don't need their flea treatment, which is most days, there's not really anything to put in this box and so I can use it for spillover from the top box. And then down here I put things like, uh, you know, birthdays and appointments and things to remember to do like the organic delivery company food order, let's say. And I was also just using this for decoration at the bottom. Now, when the Happy Planner sticker rolls came out, I fell in love with this meal planning sticker. This was in February when I first got this box. So I decided to put a meal planning sticker on the side and to make this a little bit more functional here instead of just using it for decoration, which is also fine. But I attempted to do meal planning, which as you can see was a little bit uh, spotted, <laughs> not completely thorough, but that's me and meal planning. And I also started using this honeydew list as a list of things for James to do. Instead of just reminding him, I put it on here and he really liked that. And then this is another chore list and a shopping list. So these sticker boxes have been great because they have a lot of really practical uh, stickers that come in handy for all kinds of things and there's still room for a lot of decoration. So I love this size because it's big enough that you can leave it open on the table and it's easy to see what's going on and you can also use bigger stickers like these ones in here and these uh, long stickers that run along the side. So I think that it's a fantastic planner. My concern at the moment is that when the Erin Condren launch came on launch day uh, last week or the week before, I was hoping that she would launch the 2018-19 versions of these hardbound planners like she did last year. 
and I was really disconcerted to discover that that portion of the website is just listing a single undated hardbound planner in a big size and a small size but no different types of designs like we had last year and they're also only undated there's no 18 month planner listed which makes me think that she's decided just to streamline the hardbound planners and just give this one undated option and that she's not going to bring out an 18 month one and also not going to bring out a 12 month one in December I don't know I haven't had any confirmation of that one way or the other so if any of you no, if you have insider information, I would be curious to hear about that because uh, myself and some other fans of the Hard Banner and Conrad have been speculating about this and nobody knows, as far as I can tell, but I think it's a bad sign the fact that the summer launch hasn't included a new 18-month Hard Man Planner. I don't know if that means that they're not doing as well and they've just decided to cut back or if it's just something that seems like it would be better as a 12 month and an undated planner and so there is still going to be a 12 month launch in December which I'm secretly hoping but I'm concerned that there might not be because I, I love having a dated planner for this and I wouldn't really want to have to get an undated one. So we'll see. So. As you can see, sometimes the meal planning is a complete failure, <laughs> but I like the option of having it there, and I also like being able to put a bit more everyday practical stuff into this planner. So I've been trying to put in meetings consistently and you know, to chart my whereabouts mostly for James so that he knows where I am, and also put in things like recycling, and movie nights, we've been going to the cinema on Monday nights, which has been great. And so I've been trying to put in things like that. And sometimes it just doesn't work out. Like I put this in at the beginning of the week and then I just never used it. I might have made a shopping list just on a sticky note to give to James if he was going to the supermarket or put one in my weeks, which is my personal planner. So there is a little bit of redundancy between this and my weeks because I can put anything like shopping lists in my weeks. So I try to keep the functions of my different planners quite separate so that I don't end up feeling like I have to look in more than one place for the same thing or like I have to put the same thing in multiple planners. But there is some degree of overlap, like I said, because this is a home planner and so there are some things that could go either in the home planner or in my personal planner. I also put in some work stuff, obviously like uh, the strike that I've mentioned in some other videos that we had in universities in February and March, also because that was relevant to James so that he would know what I was doing. This is a very sad week without any meal planning. <laughs> and then I've just carried on like this really, so it's been quite flexible in that despite generally trying to keep to the rule of having this second box be for the boys, quite often there's room to put in other things like shopping lists and stuff. So really I just try to go for a, a look that is pleasing to me. I know it's a bit messy but I really like this colorful look and you know, just kind of put, it's a mix of pre-planning and, and planning as I go. So sometimes I'll add things during the week if a new appointment comes up, but I try to put in some blank boxes distributed throughout the week so that I can just write things in if I need to. Because the main point is that I don't write anything directly on the paper in this planner. And that has been the rule with my home planner for quite some time is that it's, it's a pretty planner. So I like to put everything on the stickers. So with the monthly spreads, when I made my May lineup video, someone had a really good idea of suggesting using the monthly spreads as a weather tracker, which I liked. I've never tracked weather before, but I like the idea of it because the weather is quite changeable in London and especially now it's it's been like we had like a you know really boiling few days where like you know the temperatures were hotter than any ever on record for that time of the year. And then now it's raining, like just a few days later. So it's been quite confusing. And that affects the choice of like whether I'm going to need to take a coat or not when I go out. So I've been thinking actually it would be kind of nice to have the whole month mapped out in terms of weather. The only thing is in the value packs, 
I don't think any of the packs that I have have a really good a weather selection. So there are some uh, rainbow stickers and some like cloudy stickers, but I don't know if they're enough to do a whole month's worth. So I was thinking maybe I would just put in days when it's supposed to be raining or days when it's supposed to be particularly cold, and that might be a, a useful reference. So I wouldn't have to do every single day. I could just put in the days when I think I'm going to have to wear more clothes than what I would otherwise expect to wear at this time of the year, let's say. So I'm thinking about doing that, but because I'd already started decorating May, I couldn't do it for the beginning of the month. So what I decided to do is put the meal planning stickers in here, which I have been sprinkling throughout the weeks. I thought that instead it would be quite easy just to put them in here and then see if that works for meal planning. And depending on how that goes, if that's convenient or not, I'll keep doing that. And if not, then I'll switch to weather for the second half of the month and see how that goes. In terms of decorating, generally I have not had any particular rules or guidelines for color schemes or anything. I've just done whatever I felt like and I really like the colorful mishmash. But I did decide to make a purple week because I started off by putting this sticker down as I thought that it would be nice for me and James to have a little session together every day of the week, writing down daily gratitude and tracking some things and doing a like self-care focus. I thought that would be a nice thing since it's a home planner, it's something that we could do together. And just by coincidence, it happened to be purple. And when I stuck it down, I noticed that this spread is purple. So I thought, okay, I'll just go with it and do a purple spread. But this is the first time that I've done anything like that in this planner. Other than that, it's all been totally random, which I have found very pleasing as well. But I might start doing some colored spreads. In terms of how it's holding up with all of these stickers, when these planners first came out, people were really worried that because they're hardbound that you wouldn't be able to use stickers with them because they would get too bulky and it would crack the spine. So I've now been using this for 10 months out of 18 months and this is what it looks like. In fact, if I take these out, these are some stickers that I just have clipped in the back. If I take that off, this gives you a better idea of what it actually looks like. So it is a bit chunky in the middle, you can see here, but it's holding up really well. It's absolutely fine and it's more than halfway through. So this is the first 10 months that are already decorated and then this is the remaining eight months. So I don't have any concerns at all about using this as a decorated planner and covering it with stickers. It seems to be absolutely fine. I don't know if that's the reason that the hardbound planners have been reduced in terms of the number of options this year because people have been worried that they wouldn't be able to use stickers with them and I, I don't know if that's affected the sales. I'm totally speculating here, I have no idea, but I have been wondering about that because last year when this came out, a lot of people were saying, well, you won't be able to use stickers with them. So I, I'm afraid that that might've put people off using them, but it's actually an amazing planner and it's totally fine with stickers. So that is how I've been using it. This is the current week, and so I've just put in some important highlights like Eurovision tonight at 8, yay! And uh, when the dogs go to the dog sitters, and when um, I've been away, we went to the theater and I put that there. And somebody asked last time when I uh, was showing uh, this spread what these numbers are for. So uh, this is called. Um, the Omer, it's uh, basically a period between uh, Passover and Shavuot, which is the Jewish festival that's coming up next week. And between that, there's a 50-day period that's called the period of the Omer, and you're supposed to count every day. So I put the numbers of the Omer in from when it first started at Passover. Those are the small numbers there. And I was using the Mambi dates and holidays value pack stickers, which went up to 31. Obviously it's intended to be for labeling the month in an undated planner. And then I just use the numbers in the alphabet sticker pack to get up to 49. So that's that. So yeah, you can see it's just a mix of all different kinds of things, but because of the three boxes, I find it really easy to locate the relevant um, area and know what's going on. So my concern is if Erin Condren doesn't bring out another one of these for 2019, then I think I'm going to switch to the A4 Leuchtturm Horizontal Weekly Planner, which is kind of like my backup for this because I'd like to have something that's a similar size, but I really love these vertical boxes, so 
I hope that uh, she does bring out a new dated one. I have also considered switching over to the undated one when this finishes and just using the Happy Planner stickers to date the whole thing in one go, but I'd really rather not do that because for a planner like this I just like the whole thing to be professionally dated. So I know that like that might seem irrational, but that's just uh, somehow uh, kind of a deal breaker for me. So that is how I'm using my large Erin Condren. It's just fantastic as a planner that you leave open on your desk or your table and I really really love it. So I hope you enjoyed this. As always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!